This story is about a boy named Max. He is a child who is still studying in 7th grade of junior high school. He should have taken 9th grade but he didn't go up for 2 years in a row. His large body among 7th graders who are still small makes him often feared and underestimated. He is often aloof, spending his time thinking that he is nothing. He even had a habit of lying under his bed. Because he felt comfortable being there. Because he is always alone, he is often made a joke and is often bullied by his friends. Actually with that big body, he could just beat them all. But Max felt a lack of confidence. His father went to jail for murder. Besides, he's the one who always doesn't go to class. Max lives with his grandparents whom he often refers to as Graham and Grimm. His father was imprisoned while his mother had died because he was killed by his own father. One night, at dinner, his grandmother, Graham said that they had a new neighbor who moved from another city. Graham said that his new neighbor had a child with a special disease, and just got home from the hospital. While taking out the trash outside, Max peeks into his neighbor's house. There he saw a boy named Kevin. Kevin is a boy who has a spinal deformity, so he had to walk using a cane as an aid. He has a mother named Gwen. Gwen feels proud of Kevin, because even though Kevin has a disability, his brain is very intelligent. It also makes Max amazed with Kevin, but he still didn't dare to say hello to Kevin. Kevin goes to the same school as Max. When at the gym, it was Blade who liked to do the bullying. Throws a basketball at Kevin and knocks him down. Blade alleges that Max did it. So Max has to get punished from the gym teacher and also gets hate from Kevin. Max couldn't defend himself. Therefore, he could only accept it. Max is a dyslexic. Because of that, he had a hard time catching up with the lessons. So that every weekend, he is required to learn to read. In this school, a teacher can be chosen from the students. And at that time, Max's teacher turned out to be Kevin. In that class, Kevin told Max to read the book he had brought, a story book about King Arthur. Seeing Max who was still stammering and reading, Kevin told Max to close his eyes and listen to Kevin read the story. After finishing reading a few paragraphs, Kevin said that every word is part of a picture. Every sentence is a picture. So Kevin told Max to use his imagination to connect the pictures. Kevin tells Max to read chapter 1 at his house. When Kevin was about to leave class, Max said that it was Blade and not him who threw the basketball. Kevin wonders why Max wants to be fooled by Blade. As the days passed, Kevin patiently taught Max to read, even though Max is still often lazy to read because of difficulties. One night, Kevin pays Max to accompany him to a festival to see fireworks. Gwen doesn't like fireworks and she entrusts Max to accompany Kevin because of his big body. At the festival they meet Blade and his gang. They were bullied as a pair of Igor and Frankenstein. But bravely, Kevin retaliated with a clever sneer, so that makes Blade and his friends feel angry. In the end, when they celebrate the fireworks festival, Max realized that all Kevin could see were people's feet. After that, he decided to carry Kevin on his shoulders. This made Kevin feel very happy. That night was Max's first time enjoying the best fireworks display, while Kevin enjoyed it in his own way. When finished, they meet again with Blade and his gang. Max didn't know what to do, so it was Kevin told Max to move. That night it was as if Max became Kevin's leg. Meanwhile, Kevin is the brain for Max. They work together and manage to trick Blade and his friends, until finally, they had no choice but to enter the river, Blade still following them. However, luckily the mud in the river was so deep, so Blade has a hard time chasing them. Not long after, the police arrived and disciplined Blade and his gang for disturbing public order. When they see Max being taken away in a police car, Graham and Grimm think Max will be like his father. It turns out that Max is a hero and Gwen is very grateful to Max, because he's been taking care of Kevin during the festival. Inside the house, for the first time Grimm praises Max and says that he feels proud of Max, because Max has helped disabled children like Kevin. The next morning, Kevin woke Max from his sleep. Max says that he doesn't want to come with Kevin anymore because he got into trouble. He also doesn't want to make friends because he's used to having no friends. With his cleverness, Kevin said that let's just say we are a couple, because I need legs and you need brains, he said. So from that day on Kevin was always carried by Max wherever he went. Of course, such a sight made them the center of the crowd's attention. Kevin begins to teach Max about being brave, like telling the story of a hero in a King Arthur novel that he lent him. In a cafe, for example, Kevin tells Max to reprimand a man who is rude to a woman. Max and Kevin bravely told the man to stop while the people in the cafe could only watch. The two of them dreamed of becoming a group of heroes like King Arthur's hurt. One afternoon, while on a walk with his mother, Kevin sees Blade again making trouble by taking a woman's bag. Kevin had seen Blade remove evidence by putting it in a water tunnel. So when he wakes Max at night, Kevin says that a gang of thieves have stolen a treasure from a queen, and he knew where they had hide him. Kevin still often uses references from the King Arthur book when he talks. He invites Max to take the wallet and return it to its owner. With the physics calculations that Kevin did, he easily lifted the lid of the heavy culvert with ropes and an emergency ladder. Once it's open, it's Max who goes downstairs to pick it up. After they managed to get it, Blade and his gang came. At the same time, 
It turns out that they want to take the wallet, but Kevin refuses to give it up. Instead, Max kept telling Kevin to just give it up. Kevin doesn't give up easily. He climbs the fire escape ladder to escape. Meanwhile, Max is called from his heart to protect Kevin. He dared himself to fight Blade so they left in fright. Hey, The next day, the two of them went to the address in the wallet to return something that belonged to a woman named Loretta. When they managed to find Loretta they were pulled in instead. Loretta was happy to have her purse back, but she was also shocked when she saw Max's face, a familiar face. It turns out that Loretta and her boyfriend, Iggy, are friends with Kenny, Max's father. Loretta recognized Max because Max had been in the newspapers, and he was said to be a mute boy who sat on the witness stand during his father's trial. Hearing that, Max felt angry and got out of there. Max then tells Kevin to stay away from him because this was the second time he had gotten into trouble just because of Kevin's mission game. They have something in common with not being raised by a father making Kevin say that he never knew his father either, because his father ran away when he found out that Kevin was born with a disability. Kevin said that whoever our father is, does not determine who we are. A knight proves his worth by his deeds. And Kevin brought references from King Arthur to cheer up Max. Meanwhile, Kevin never asked about Max's father. Likewise with Max who never asked about Kevin's father, because their father is not themselves. While at school, the two of them became more confident as an inseparable couple. Kevin is known as Freak, while Max is called as the Mighty. Their gang is known as Freak the Mighty. Even when playing basketball, Kevin wants to go with Max. It made Gwen called by the principal, and the principal explained the policy regarding children with disabilities who were not allowed to participate in sports activities. But Gwen says that all his life Kevin has been bullied, so that he lives in his mind. He became more fond of books, science, and creative ideas. Max has already given this opportunity, and Gwen doesn't want the school to take her away from Kevin. Finally Kevin was allowed to take gym class, as long as it's with Max. When playing basketball, Kevin became a player. The appreciation and support given by Kevin's friends is certainly very important to build Kevin's confidence. One day, Graham receives a letter to Max from Kenny, his father, without giving the letter to Max. Graham threw it in the trash. At school, the principal calls Max and informs him that his father will be released on parole. Hearing that, Max immediately had a panic attack. He remembered his bad memories with Kenny. But the principal says that Kenny will not be allowed to approach Max because that is the condition of his release. At home, Grim also prepares himself in case Kenny comes to the house. Graham who saw her husband prevented him from doing something stupid. She didn't want to put hatred in this house. Because it's not good for their grandson, Max. One day at school, at lunch, Kevin began to mingle with his friends. He became a humorous figure with his unique joking style. But suddenly he had a cough and then passed out. Max immediately ran to help Kevin and shouted for help. After the incident, Kevin was hospitalized. Don't know what happened to Kevin yet. But it was clear from the expression on Gwen's face that Max knew something was wrong. Outside, Gwen talks to the doctor. The cause of Kevin fainting was airway obstruction caused by blood that was not properly oxygenated. Then the doctor also said that Kevin's bone growth had stopped. Meanwhile his internal organs continued their natural growth. And the doctor said that maybe Kevin could only have about a year. After hearing that, Gwen felt very sad. Max, who didn't know the truth, could only comfort Gwen as best he could and he also says if Kevin eats too fast again then he will throw the food away. After two weeks Kevin was hospitalized, finally he was allowed to go home. Kevin's health condition is certainly not as healthy as it used to be. One winter day, they take a walk. At an intersection, Kevin says something to Max. He wanted Max to keep it a secret from everyone. Kevin said that in the building across the street there was a laboratory called the Experimental Biogenetic Unit. In the near future, Kevin said that he would go in there. With biogenetic technology, he will get a new body. Kevin spoke very convincingly. He said that he had been tested, his blood was analyzed and also x-rayed. One day, Max was at his lowest point. He finds an old photo showing his father and mother as well as friends celebrating his birthday. In fact, he had forgotten his father. But because of the photo, he was reminded of his trauma when he was a child. Graham who saw that immediately comforted him. As much as you are to your father, you are not him. You know why, because you have the kindness of your mother, Graham said. After hearing that, Max calmed down. At night Max's basement window opens. He was shocked that his father went in there and came back for Max. That night, his father took Max away from his grandparents' house. Max couldn't do anything but leave a hint. Sitting close to his father made Max seem paralyzed and unable to think. Kenny, his father was annoyed that the letter sent and also all the gifts he sent never reached Max. Maybe it's because Graham always throws it away. Meanwhile at the same time, the police come to Graham and Grimm's house. The police gave information that Kenny did not report to his parole officer. And Kenny is currently declared a runaway. Hearing the conversation, Grimm came out and said that Max wasn't in his room either. Kevin, who heard this, immediately acted, as always, with a passion for solving mysteries. He tries to find clues in Max's room. In the room, Kevin found a photo, and out of the way he found Max's hat. He also found the footprints of Max's shoes. Kevin remembered what Loretta said when they returned the wallet that time. That her boyfriend Iggy, is going back to doing something with Kenny. Kevin thought this was a mission. He immediately went to catch up to Loretta's apartment with his mother's car. It seems unreasonable indeed, considering Kevin is a smart and brave boy. 
His reckless actions could be considered reasonable. Meanwhile, Max is taken to Loretta and Iggy's apartment. Iggy put them in another room where the occupants were out of town. There Max is held and tied up so he can't escape. Kenny planned for them to leave tomorrow morning. On that occasion, she told Max that she had never killed anyone including his mother. Of course Max didn't believe Kenny, but he also still vaguely remembers the incident. Elsewhere, Kevin who is not good at driving a car, he has problems on the road until he crashes his mother's car and it breaks down. After that, he got the idea to make the hood of the car into a snow slide to get to Loretta's apartment. An exciting experience that has never been experienced by Kevin before. Get out! Out At the apartment, Loretta came to Kenny. He brought them pizza to enjoy on Christmas Eve. Loretta's arrival was meant to help Max escape. Pretending to turn on the heater, she gave Max a pair of scissors to escape. When Kenny is about to get kicked out, Loretta tries to buy time by telling her that Max and his disabled friend once returned a wallet whose contents were still intact. Hearing that, Kenny felt angry because no one should know this place. Because there are other people like Kevin who know this place. Maybe Kevin would tell someone else and her plan could fail. Max who was trying to escape accidentally dropped the scissors. This causes Loretta's plan to be exposed. Loretta was immediately beaten by Kenny, Kenny immediately strangled Loretta. It makes Max remember his childhood trauma when Kenny strangled his mother. He remembered everything that it was true that his father killed his mother. At the same time, Kevin, who had been trying so hard, finally arrived at the apartment. He had called the police before, and just as he was about to knock on Loretta's door, he heard Max screaming in another apartment. When Max clashes with Kenny, Kevin comes to help. With his bragging about a water gun he made by himself, he managed to spray Kenny's eyes until she felt pain. Then, Max with his strength pushed Kenny until she fell. Then Max took Kevin out of the apartment. At that time, the police who were called by Kevin had arrived and immediately chased after Kenny, who had been a fugitive for one day. Kenny was recaptured and Freak the Mighty managed to help the police get Kenny back into prison. After that they celebrated Christmas together. Graham, Grim and Max celebrate with Gwen and Kevin. This is the happiest Christmas Max has had since the bad days he's been through. When he gets home, Kevin gives Max a Christmas present, a book with the title Freak the Mighty, but it has a blank sheet in it. Kevin said the same thing when he first taught Max to read in class, that every word is part of a picture, every sentence is a picture in itself. That night, they separated into their respective homes. Max did not know that it turned out to be the last night for him to meet Kevin, because in the early morning, Kevin died in his sleep. Graham told Max about the news. Max is feeling very sad. He couldn't believe that his best friend had died. Max heads to the biogenetic lab that Kevin had told him about. When he entered there, Max couldn't believe what he saw. It turns out that this is not a genetic laboratory as Kevin described. This is just an ordinary factory. Kevin was too smart to tell stories. He knew he wouldn't live much longer, but he didn't want Max to be worried about him. Meanwhile, Max believes too much with the genetic laboratory boast that Kevin told. He didn't even know that his best friend was dying. Because of Max's sadness with Kevin's departure, he locked himself in his room for days. He even passed Kevin's funeral day until Gwen moved out of the house. One day, when he was alone at the bus stop, Max meets Loretta. Max is asked what he has been doing since Kevin died. Max said that there was nothing he could do. Loretta said that acting like that would hold you back, think again, she said. Unexpectedly, one sentence from Loretta actually made Max excited again. At school, Max begins to try not to be a quiet student. He began to actively give answers that made his teacher touched by the change. Max also thinks when Kevin can teach him to read books, maybe he could write a book too. Finally, Max picks up the blank book Kevin had given him as a Christmas present. He wrote something in there that without realizing it time made him keep writing. Max only writes his story with an intelligent disabled child who is called Freak by his environment. Kevin is dead. But, Max wants Kevin to live in his book. Max wants people to know the story of Freak the Mighty. This film teaches us one thing that we all have our weaknesses. We're not perfect, but if we are together, then we can do more than we can think. We just need to accept without judging one another. And make that we feel belonging to each other until we feel the power of friendship in our lives.